Hey Skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Welcome to our weekly Top 5 Fridays Ski Industry News videos. Took a week off last week, back at it. Yep. Um, I'd say it's a pretty light week for news, Bob. Would you concur? I concur. So I think we'll get through things pretty quickly, uh, and then we can pick up on that conversation that we were just having off air towards the end here. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was interesting. We got a challenge for you guys. Um, so first topic of the week, the U.S. ski team has announced a mogul development team, also known as a D team. And Bob, you and I were both under the impression that this already existed. Yeah, I was surprised to read that they did not have a D team. Yeah, me too. Um, we've talked a lot over the past, I guess, year or so about, you know, it kind of came out of the the division between the NCAA and the U.S. ski team. Yeah. And there were kind of some meetings and stuff about how they built a better pipeline for those athletes onto the ski team. So this feels similar to that. It feels like it's kind of kind of coming off of that, that topic. Um, but essentially designed to bridge the gap between regional clubs and national teams. Um, D-team athletes get invited to U.S. ski team prep camps and also have access to the Center of Excellence in the Utah Olympic Park. Yeah, and that's a nice facility. Super nice, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's, I mean, those are, like, those are very valuable resources yeah. To, yeah. to have access to, and it just helps with athlete development. Um, so my big question to you, Bob, is will you be going out for a spot on the... U.S. ski team. I think my time has passed. <laughs> the speed and magnitude with which those athletes go down those hills is really impressive. I feel like the tr toughest part for you to get back into competitive mogul skiing would probably be the jump scores. Yeah. You know, I would do okay on the ground. Yeah. My turns in line would still be all right. What happens if you just skip the jumps? You don't score as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's only, it's what, 25% of your score? Yeah. yeah, I guess that's a big chunk. Yeah. And what do you get for, like, straight airs that are just a little bit off the ground? Uh, I don't know, but that's what I, <laughs> that's probably what I would get. <laughs> Anyways, all joking aside, it's great to have that. Um, really nice to see just the progression on the U.S. ski team and, and how they're adding different pathways yeah. onto the team for, for different athletes. So great to see, and we'll have to have to watch and see how the D team members do and, and whether they're whether they work their way onto the the full team. Yeah, I think it's just nice to have another level of support there, you know, once you're done with your regional right uh, competition and go on to the na you know, if you don't make nationals, then there's still you're, another then, option. Yeah. You don't just have to like quit. Right. Which kind of felt it, like how it was before. No, and a lot of people I think are just a little bit later to develop too, so you never know who you're right. missing out on if you kind of force those people out of the circuit. Yeah. That's a great, great point. Phil Mickelson didn't win his first major until he was in his 30s. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, second topic of the week, the IOC has unanimously approved ski mountaineering for the 2026 Olympics. I think I would do better in moguls versus ski mountaineering in the Olympics. Yeah, I would agree. I think I would... Uh, I finished dead last in both, but... <laughs> I think my, my gap would be bigger in the Mountaineer. You might not finish dead last in moguls. Someone would have to have a really bad run. Because it's one of those things, like the Olympics are, are one of those unique events where countries send their best, but some countries are just kind of bad at things. Right. So maybe, I don't know, probably not. Anyways, we talked about this about a month ago. Um, it it kind of came up as a possibility. They've since voted on it, and it unanimously passed. Um, there will be five total events. We did talk about this, but we'll just do a quick refresher. Um, there'll be men's and women's individual. So they have like longer individual races and a sprint race so that encompasses four total races. And then there will be a mixed gender relay race, which I think is really cool. Yeah. I like the idea of that. Um, I think the most interesting part of this is it feels quite a bit different than most Olympic sports. I'd say like maybe biathlon is somewhat similar in, with the transitions and stuff and having different equipment to use. Um, but it's going to be really interesting to see people's equipment choices. You know, you do have like a, a fairly big variety of different yeah. equipment to choose from. Um, and then speed of transitions, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot that goes into it outside of just the skiing. 
Do you think, is there a pipeline for this? Is there like a junior? Is there a uh, ski mountaineering, ski development, mountaineering team? development team? Like, oh, how do you, what's the entry point to this? Ah, that's a great question. You just, you, you just, nat, like someone's naturally good at it? And then well, there's existing ski randonnée races. Yeah. I mean, that stuff's way bigger in Europe than it is here in the United States. Right. So I imagine there's more of a pathway into this for European athletes. And we'll have to see, like, I don't know, maybe all those people at Stowe at like 5.30 in the morning that are skinning up Gondolier, maybe they're training for the 2026 Olympics. Yep. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> wait and see. <laughs> uh, but I do think that's cool. Kind of rounds out the Olympics, which I think we mentioned this last time we talked about this, but it it feels similar to adding skateboarding and, and BMX into the Olympics, yep. which we're about to see uh, in the coming weeks. So just cool to kind of differentiate the Olympic sports. Um, third topic of the week, we're kind of moving away from competitive skiing into more resort news here. Uh, we got a couple of reports of ski resorts kind of feeling the effects of labor shortages, uh, both for better and for worse. I guess we'll start with for worse. Um, Snow Basin has been forced to cancel its blues, brews, and barbecue event due to a lack of staffing, which sounds great. Yeah. Not the, Not the fact that it canceled, but the event. <laughs> yeah. uh, here in Stowe, we have, what, bikes, bikes, bikes. beers, and bur- 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 bevs? No. Bev- B3. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think it involves bikes. Bikes and beers. And beers and something else. But anyways, a similar festival, um, not Be- quite as beats. big. Beats? Beats. Yeah, Music. there you go. Yeah. Anyways, so very, very similar. Uh, unfortunately, they had to cancel their event due to a lack of staffing, um, which must be, it must be a significant lack of staffing to cancel a big event like that. Yeah. It's like a six-day event with five major concerts. So unfortunate there. Uh, on a more positive side, uh, we're, continually, we're continuing to see resorts um, increase their minimum wages in an effort to, to actually fill these, these hiring yeah. challenges. So Deer Valley, Park City, and all of Vail Resorts have now announced a $15 minimum wage. Um, and, you know, I think in the broader scheme of things, it just brings up the conversation of, like, the kind of dying ski bum lifestyle. Yeah. So hopefully out of all of this, we reach kind of a new balance where we can, you know, get back to having more of a local workforce to support, right. support these resorts and, and hopefully give a more livable wage. Um, so kind of interesting to see see the effects there and, and we'll continue to kind of keep an eye on that as we as we get into the ski season. Fourth topic of the week, and this is where we can uh, restart that interesting conversation we were just having. The Indy Pass has added four new resorts to their pass, bringing the total to a whopping 72. Uh, they get Titus Mountain in New York, Montage Mountain in Pennsylvania, Snow Valley Mountain Resort in California, and Ski Marmot Basin in Alberta. Um, I think the, the, the part that Bob and I thought was most interesting about this is with the way that the Indy Pass works, you pay, what, $279? Yeah. $279, and you get two ski days at all of their existing resorts. Yeah. So my challenge to you and anyone out there is, is it possible to get all... 144 days. Yeah, can you finish the Indy Pass? Is it possible? I mean, there's a bunch of re- there's a bunch of things that would make it seem like it's not possible. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these resorts probably don't have a season that's 144 days long. Yeah. So you'd have to like really kind of like be strategic about that aspect. You'd have to be strategic about the travel yeah. and try and stick to certain regions and like your travel would basically all have to happen at night. Right. So, interesting concept. Know. Yeah, I haven't really looked at the map too, Yeah. you know, in too much detail. But. Yeah. If anybody out there has the time, uh, bring up a map of all the Indie Resort or Indie Pass participating resorts and see if you can come up with a a map or yeah. a, a plan of, of how that would be possible. The route to success. Yeah, so that's our challenge to you, whether you do it or whether you just give us your opinion on whether or not it's possible. And then we get four edits of the week this week. 
Uh, we have Bo James Wells. Uh, he shares a short film called Monarchy, which is already kind of making some waves in the freestyle, free ski park community. Uh, Bo James Wells happens to be friends with some of the best park skiers in the world. So, you know, his his 10 minute edit is better than most because yeah. <laughs> uh, the skiing in it is, is really, really good. Uh, and then level one released Parker White segment from the 2018 film Zigzag. If you haven't seen that, check it out. Classic Parker White skiing. Parker's crazy. He skis really, really fast. He was a young mogul competitor when I was a coach here on the Eastern Seaboard. Oh, cool. So I got to see him as a young, young child. Huh. Skiing and doing well. Was that in the Max Gorham era, too? Pretty close. Pretty close to the Max Gorham era. He was era. younger. Parker or Max, if you're watching. Hi. How's it going? Um, and then we get Call Me Crazy, the legend of Mike Weegley, uh, in light of his recent passing. 20-minute little documentary film. Really interesting. Shows yeah. his... He's one of the pioneers of heli skiing, um, and it kind of shows his upbringing and his past and, and the challenges of, of starting a heli ski operation. Um, so really, really cool. A lot of cool interviews in there. I didn't have a chance to watch the whole thing yet, but I plan to, to finish it just as soon as we're done filming. Um, and then finally, this is a kayaking edit, which is somewhat rare for us, but Dane Jackson, uh, it's on his YouTube channel. It's him and three other paddlers on El Rio Claro. Uh, I follow Dan Jackson on social media because he's crazy and I have a kayaking background. So I remember seeing clips of this as he was doing it, but it's like the narrowest, most technical river you can possibly imagine. It gives me massive anxiety yeah. watching it because I've been in, in unfavorable situations in a whitewater kayak before and I know the, the claustrophobic kind of panicky feel that sets in really quickly. And there's a couple moments in this video that I don't, I don't like watching. It looks pretty dangerous. It's very dangerous. I mean, they're like the best kayakers in the world. And it is, I guess it's probably less dangerous than it looks, especially for them. Yeah. Um, also, just judging by the fact that they're like very rare. I don't think they ever set safety. They might have glossed over that part, but I don't, I didn't see very many throw bags or stuff. So for them, it's probably safer than it looks, but... Yeah, gives gives me the, the heebie-jeebies yeah. watching that kind of stuff. Um, and that's it for Edits of the Week. Pretty quick week. Uh, Bob, you got anything exciting going on this weekend? Uh, Lamoille County Field Days. Is it? Yep. So the fair, bring the kids to do some rides. Oh, boy. So that'll be nice. I didn't realize that was this weekend. You got the truck pull. That's always a, that's always a favorite. I'm going to have to check the schedule. Yep. We're going to have to sign off right now and check the <laughs> schedule of our local Lamoille County Fair. Uh, so hope everyone has a great weekend, and we'll be back next week. And in just a couple weeks, we should be releasing the results to our 2022 ski test. So that's exciting. This room has been filled with skis for the past four months, uh, <laughs> and Bob and I are excited to share what we've been working on. Yep. So hopefully that's up in just a couple weeks, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.